Welcome back, everybody, to the Expand Podcast. This is your host, Zarin Beatty, and I'm here with a new friend, Craig Boxcar. Mm -hmm. Craig, thank you for being here. We have a mutual counterpartner, John oh, yeah. Morse, yep. sitting right with us. Next to us. This is pretty cool. You're um you're in town for just a few days. Yeah. You came in for the tattoo convention. Yeah. How was that? Oh, it was great. Yeah. The third year. So each year always stoked to come out. So That's already looking awesome. forward to the next one. <laughs> it's um yeah, yeah, from what I know, it's it's uh improved a lot, which yeah. is pretty cool to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. How um how long have you been tattooing? Tattooing, this is my twelfth year tattooing. Um yeah, come summer. So, um, yeah, it's been a good, good amount of time. <laughs> you long enough, but not long enough, if that makes sense. Mm. You know. <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, I think like the ten year marker. You're like, yeah, I don't know if I know what I'm still doing yet. So <laughs> there's a there's a weird spot that comes at the ten year mark. It's this weird. I think I mean, for I, anything. For yeah. anything, I mm -hmm. felt it with fitness and meditation and yeah. martial arts. So I'm not I'm I'm not there yet, but I'm approaching the 10 year, ten yeah, okay. year mark with martial arts. Yeah. And there's a weird thing where you start to question, but also know all of the information that you've been learning for a decade. Yeah. And it's like, it's, can I trust it yet? Is like, do I need more like guidance? It's a very kind of interesting mm. part of the journey. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. Definitely like anything. Cause you're, especially in like an art sense, you're like, man, am I just wasting time here? Like, is this getting through to anything or like, you know, how's this going to pan out? <laughs> so, so it does when you, when you hit that mark, cause then you think of like, you know, using like a little more abstract words or like, like a decade, you know, so something sounds more intense when you say a decade for, at least in my opinion, you know, than saying like 10 years. I don't know why. I'm the same way. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think about some people that have lived for almost like a century mm. and it just sounds way more like intense than like, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what have you been up to, man? I've heard only a little bit about you. I've heard that you've traveled the world a little bit. Yeah. You seem pretty calm in yeah. your, in your approach and in, in your behavior. Yeah, I yeah. feel that way. I feel well, when I was younger, I wasn't, I was much more like much more angry, <laughs> but I, I, I've been, um, I started traveling like heavily in, uh, maybe 10 years ago. Um, and I came from a smaller town where a lot of those other things didn't exist. Like, uh, the idea of going anywhere, you know? So I think about like, yeah, 10, 12 years ago of me, being in another country like that just never even existed, you know, so I don't even know if I had like uh, what you would say, like dreams and aspirations. I just didn't even couldn't grasp anything after like, you know, a few weeks in my life. <laughs> so traveling around has been like really awesome. It's opened me up to so much other culture and and understanding, you know, and so I've, I've worked on six of seven continents other than Antarctica. So, which maybe I'll go, I don't know <laughs> if there's a point, <laughs> but, uh, you know, other than just like some bucket list situation, but it's not concerned, but so, so working on all those working on like with tattooing, tattooing. Yeah. Like in yeah. different conventions or events, conventions or events, or just visiting, hmm. um, uh, you know, able to, um, meeting new people, you know, and that has helped me like keep, you know, keep going in other countries and stuff mm. like that by like proxy and other people yeah, and stuff like a, that. It, so it, there's a natural flow to that. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, so it's, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I was just in India from, uh, January and February. So, and that was my first time over there, um, in that part of like Asia, you know, so. Yeah. It's funny how that's considered Asia. I know, right? You know, like yeah. in, the, in the Western <laughs> world, there's just a weird, like, or just in the world in general. Yeah. Like we just group like the biggest collection of people in Asia. Oh, yeah, totally. 
It's huge. It's like a <laughs> yeah. big, and then there's all the islands, and yeah, it's uh, it's a weird like pocket there, it and really like parts is. of China. Yeah, we're um, it's so vast. <laughs> yeah, very cult- culturally diverse. Yeah, the same culture essentially. Yeah, totally. What um, what brought you to India, man? Um, that, that's kind of a leap. It is, yeah. So years ago, I, um, I was studying um. Uh, philosophy, uh, Advaita Vedanta, and um, trying to understand more like of a spiritual process, you know, and going through that, I think it just started calling me, you know, to want to go into India and wanted to visit and um, experience this other, other part, you know, so, and I always kind of wanted to, it was always in the back of my mind, but I never thought it was kind of like ready to to do it. And, uh, then I was kind of going through some more like, uh, life changing events. Um, nothing like too drastic, you know, just like everyday, you know, relationship stuff <laughs> or, or, you know, any, anything going on in life. And that it just started to kind of like fall into place. And I was like, I got to do this. I, I have to go. Like, it wasn't a, like really much of an option. It was just like, well, I gotta, I gotta go. And so, um, yeah, I just made the leap to go over there. And I've, a lot of the other countries I've been to or places, I usually just kind of, unless it's like a tattoo situation, I usually just kind of just go and see what happens. I don't really plan it too much. You know, obviously there's a little bit of planning, but nothing too crazy. I like to be a little looser for the encounter of, you know, like what if I meet somebody out there and we got to go, who you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, but when I got there, it was very like apparent, like, mm, this is going to be a lot harder to <laughs> do. <laughs> India's not like, a, I mean, you could do it and I've done it. It's fine. You could go there and, and, and be that way. But I was saying, you know, we were just talking about that. Um, John and I about, um, uh, having more of a pre-planning mm-hmm. thing is uh, it's easier. That's what I would recommend to anyone going over there, having like a bit of a foothold of what, what they're going to do, but still, you know, Keep keep a little open there for like, uh, you know, some random experience. It's definitely going to happen because that's the place for it. <laughs> it's uh, well, yeah. it's such a healthy way of being. Yeah, I mean, in any situation, anyone in anywhere in general, and yeah, and I feel like that. Um, even though that was always kind of like with me, you know, like um, you know, there's this uh, the Taoist quote, right, where it was like um. Oh, what does it say? Like the great way is easier uh, if you have no preference, mm-hmm. you know? So if you <laughs> that's kind of cool. don't, yeah, if you just kind of go for, along for the ride on this, it's going to be much easier to deal with, you know? So I've been able to like develop that into my life coming back here and uh, seems to work out so <laughs> <laughs> much easier. Well, uh, it's like Bruce Lee's like eff- effortless effort. Or, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Like- but it's such a paradox mm-hmm. because if you don't if you don't think about it, uh, how are you gonna get there? Like if you don't put in the effort to look effortless, like how does how does that work? <laughs> like what does that look like? You know, my friend told me it was like, I don't know what that looks like, and I was like, I don't know, I don't know. Just just do it or don't. I don't know. <laughs> in your experiences with, I mean, do you me- meditate at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, coming back, uh, my meditation practice has changed. And um, because I don't have my own space right now, um, uh, my my balance is kind of off. But I, I just have to do the best I do. I usually get up early in the morning and I do walks. And that's like something. Um, and um, I meditate in my work, too, a lot. So I don't think um, sitting meditation is always having to be meditation or mm-hmm. like, you know, in that. But there's like a certain silence of walking or even eating. <laughs> you know, what I mean, just this focal point of this one oneness of whatever you're doing. Um, so I do a lot of that in painting. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like s- switching over, you know, because I think when I first started meditating, I was... I was like, well, I just want to be peaceful or I want to be, 
Um, I want to be more calm. And then it became more of like an egotistical way of like me, like later on when I was in India and, um, um, I met some people out there, like basically kind of put it into perspective, like, well, why are you meditating? And I was like, well, because like the world is insane and I want to relax. I want to like, you know, and they're like, well, what's making you be insane? And like, so it kind of put, put this other thing into perspective that it was just really more of an, uh, an escape, you know, to meditate what, what I was doing rather than like hitting head on to like, what's making me having to meditate to like, you know, escape this mm. reality, which you can't escape from. It just is what it is. So yeah, my meditation practice has changed throughout that through like, um, recently being like, uh, also, um, uh, initiated into Kriya yoga out there through like an original lineage and, um, um, learning more of uh, Buddhist practice and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. With your travel, especially in India, which is a big part of like meditation's origin, mm -hmm. how do you find your ability to blend that into the Western world? Or oh, yeah. kind of where do you see how we can start to transition, how people behave over here to find that balance between not so heavily in one side, but yeah. how do we blend these? Yeah. Oh man. I don't know. Um, hmm. I think, um, I think it's going to take a long time for that to happen. <laughs> We're so conditioned to look externally and even now that meditation is slowly coming in, even from like the 60s and like uh, transcendental meditation and all these new variations of meditation practices are really for like, uh, how can it, what can it give me and my benefit? Mm -hmm. So it's being marketed. And so they're trying to find a way still to make money off of it, you know, and they're still trying to find this, you know, so it still feels like a gimmick, I think, for a lot of people. Um, you know, I never even thought about that. I just kind of, you know, just, yeah, that, that's a good, that's a good question. <laughs> where, um, where, what were some of the most important aspects of, like, of the approach in that culture compared to how we hear about it? over here mm. because there's different articulations that happen. There's different focuses that even each genre has yeah. in, you know, the States. But mm -hmm. what, what were some things that really stood out to you that you have, that you may not have heard yet over here? Mm. Cause if, if I feel like when we travel to like those different cultures, they explain the same concept in such a different way that we can build a completely different perspective around it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot, there, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of information out there with different, you know, like genres or sects of, of that, that primarily focus on meditation and stuff like that. It's, it's hard cause I'm trying to think about it. Um, to get back to you on that one yeah that's <laughs> it'll right. the gears are turning on totally, that one yeah. but i, I, I yeah what are mm. some of like the, the the fundamental roots of your practice and um, what have you kind of because it, how long have you been doing it for the last um i would say the last five years okay. so not super long mm -hmm. but long enough but long enough to to really kind of dive in and then I would say I think it was about the three years ago coming here where I first had uh, uh, taken like mushrooms and uh, before that. So I didn't I haven't for a long time um, for about 15 years. I was straight edge. I was like the complete other aspect, you know, the anti of of what's going on now. So I'm also kind of like still feeling that out, you know, mm -hmm. after I'm 34 now. So what the last five years of that 30 years or, or whatever, you know, it's 
it's changing and I'm still like playing with that now too, you know, and trying to figure out how to like shed the old parts. Um, you know, um, yeah. Going off topic on that. One, <laughs> <but>. <laughs> it's all on topic. Which I do a lot. It's, it's all on okay. Topic. That's a topic. Yeah. <laughs> it is. How do you, um, so you mentioned that you meditate during tattooing or mm, painting. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. That's a, that's a very, modern way to kind of view what meditation could be yeah that's it is but it's also so old i mean it's such a zen practice like that in in meditation and i never noticed that but i would you know like when you dive into your own work and you're like don't even realize what time it is half the time you know because you're just completely lost in time and space it's just so irrelevant you know so if you're just like really like in the groove with something and you know four hours later or whatever, you know, half an hour later, like, wait, what time is it? Like, because you were meditating in a way, you just didn't maybe not know it or understand it. And, um, I was doing that a lot years ago, you know, just getting lost in the work and then like making those connections spiritually, um, kind of helped with that practice too, you know, and you're just giving the full attention to what you're doing. And, um, it's really hard for us because there's so much going on. Like we were saying in like in Western culture, we're, we're like constantly being bombarded with ads and things to do. So our brains are just overactive and, you know, it takes a long time to get into that one, one pointed, like, you know, the one pointedness and stuff like that. So with that, like figuring that out in my work practice, how to work that into my meditation practice, and um, being aware and like fully absorbed into the moment um, really helps, especially when you're tattooing for me, at least because I'm just sitting there with somebody for a long period of time. Mm. And uh, so I have to like really absorb all that energy that's going on. And um, yeah, that's a special practice. It is. My buddy Eddie <clears throat> was tattooing somebody this weekend for six hours yeah. like, straight. Yeah, it's like it's wild. (laughs) Yeah, because there's so like the physical pain, emotional pain. And, you know, you're both like working at it together, you know, but you're like you're dishing it out, you know, but he's asking (laughs) for it. (laughs) So it's it's really weird. It's it's a weird thing. And I've, you know, like after like what I was saying, like a couple of years ago when I came here and John had introduced me into like psychedelics really. And, um, it totally like put everything through like a whirlwind afterward because like all the things that normally in my life I would have been like more hung up on the more I was like, wow, that's weird. Let's play with this idea. Like in my mind. And I was like slower processing things because I was, I've removed myself so much from like the the baggage the the you know yet I still feel it I I just it's hard to explain I feel it in a different way now like um the reality has kind of tweaked different like a different frequency maybe or something the best way I can explain it you know well when we allow different sources of information to kind of flow into our conscious unconscious perspective Mm -hmm. then we're able to like use ancient wisdom or use these other like modalities and levels of input to like find what's beneficial and discard what isn't. I mean, yeah, this goes like right into Bruce Lee. Yeah, use totally what is useful, you know, discard what is not. Yeah. And who knows at what like depth and mm-hmm. what level he meant that. Exactly. But it's just it's um, so open. It really is. Mm-hmm. I mean, running water never goes stale. Yeah, you know, exactly. You, you got to keep it flowing in many different ways. And we get so stuck, man. And oh, so stuck. So mm-hmm. incredibly stuck in our own behavior and ways and the people mm-hmm. we're around or our fucking thought patterns. Too. Oh, yeah. It's fucking yeah. crazy. But we've been conditioned for so many centuries and of the way, you know, but, you know, since we were born into the world and our parents were like, well, this is you now and you have to do this because that's what we did and that's what they did and that's what they did. And so it's really hard to shed this, uh, existence, you know, this like identity. (laughs) So, you know, and then I was like realizing that and I was like, wow, that just lost all of my like 
you know, being like pissed off or mad about like, you know, like, why did my mom do this? You know, it's like, well, that's because she was told that yeah. earlier, you know, and then they were told it. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> you know, that's been one of the, who do you hold accountable? <laughs> 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 who can I blame? I want to blame shit. somebody. <laughs> That is such a fucking perfect question. Yeah. Because would there even be an answer? Yeah. And that's kind of the humbling aspect. It's yeah. like, what fingers do you have to point anymore? Mm-hmm. Well, and, and that's a, yeah. The other thing too is really quick is that, uh, what are you going to do with the answer anyway? You have it and then you're like, <laughs> all right, well now what, <laughs> you know, like these certain times, like now I just stopped asking questions to things where I don't even know like what I would do with the answer, you know, like, a whole existences of you know life or like the the meaning of life like i don't think we're meant to know any of that anyway because even if you did like okay well then you just do what you're doing anyway because you realize that it it doesn't even matter it just you're just here you just be here and man you know this concept has come up a lot recently like in my <laughs> own internal like oh yeah just turmoil in a sense yeah and it's so fascinating because i like 1400 percent agree with you yeah like i don't know (laughs) (laughs) i don't know if the actual reason why matters it feels like more Mm -hmm. the fact that it is happening is what matters yeah because in the happening in the becoming of the moment the Mm -hmm. moment turning into a brand new moment that that moment between past, present, and future, that is like an infinite, endless yeah. moment of discovery. Oh, yeah. The happening of that is what matters. Mm-hmm. Where do yeah. you go with it? What happens in that moment? Yeah. Like that is what we should be paying like paying attention to. Right, exactly. Yeah, the rest is just thought, you know, because our minds are only work in the past. So, because it's only like working on what we just saw, or you know what I mean? So... You know, the future obviously doesn't exist yet. So it's just another thought. It's just like a fake creation. So we're just lost in our own like concept of time and reality. Mm. Completely missing the the moment that's going on now, which is the only reality of, is just, you know, this presence. Um, <laughs> God, damn. Sounds really wild. But... It- <laughs> But you comprehend it, and I can like legitimately feel that from yeah. you. Yeah. A lot of people, with no disrespect, <clears throat> can vocalize mm-hmm. these words yeah. in the same order, but there's there may be some form of gravity that's missing within like the grasping and the comprehension of yeah. these of these notions. Yeah, and definitely. I, it's being felt from you. Yeah. And it's <clears throat> it's very fascinating because mm. I found myself recently becoming very aware of what i'm projecting into the future oh yeah like remarkably like more aware than i've ever been before yeah and there's because i've noticed it more with um so i did a speech recently on stage so like a few minutes before i was like projecting myself into the future so what the fuck am i even doing like breathe yeah right? like you're not even there yet it doesn't even mm. make sense to <laughs> start to formulate my behavior in a moment that it doesn't even exist. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's very fascinating. It is. I mean, when you're thinking about it and that's what breaks that barrier. Once you're like, wow, this is weird. Why am I acting this way? And then you start to ask yourself those questions, you know, cause I think the brain works because uh, you have like unanswered or like unresolved situations that occur, you know, so that we get hung up on certain things, you know, or like, you know, the idea. So it didn't come yet. And we're like thinking about all these like crazy things that don't exist yet. And, um, once you kind of realize that you're doing that, then you kind of laugh at it because it's okay. We still do it. I still do it. I still feel it. Now it just, it like ends quicker. Mm. It's like a, it happens and the thought comes in. And then I'm like, oh, that's weird. I hang on to it for as long as I need to. And then I laugh about it and it goes away. But, you know, it's it's just a constant repetitive cycle because the brain, you can never shut it off. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I was doing earlier when my meditation practice, like uh, I would uh, try to like s- snuff it out. Like, no thought. Don't think. 
don't think. And then I'm thinking about not thinking. <laughs> so then you're, I'm thinking again and, you know, and I'm like struggling. And so it's a constant, like the mind is so violent and it's like, you know, you're just like constantly trying to, you're at war with it all the time. And if you just let it like do its thing and flow and don't hold on to it, mm -hmm. it becomes much easier. And so like, yeah, like those things like thinking about in the future, you know, I'm sure I was thinking about it today to coming here or like, um, you know, I have to go to Vegas soon and there's a lot of stuff going on there that I have to deal with. And so it comes in and out, in and out. And, uh, when you, when, when that, when you, when you realize that it becomes more fun to kind of play with it, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. I, um, I wrote my final paper in college on mindfulness and meditation. Oh, amazing. And one of the biggest things that was highlighted through, you know, scientific study and research was that when people legitimately focus on the breath, the past and the future go away. Oh, yeah. Like the default mode network in the brain shuts down mm. and you become like hyper aware of the moment. Mm -hmm. And for me, my own comprehension and understanding and personal experiences, what that moment becomes is the feeling of sensation yeah now every part of reality in life boils down to sensation yeah your anger your sadness your mm -hmm. your blissfulness your orgasmic euphoria mm -hmm. these are beautiful sensations All of that them. hone us in dude, yeah. to our soil yeah definitely so yeah i mean that's been that just, it literally reveals itself to be more and more true mm -hmm. the more time goes on. Yeah. And you realize when you feel those sensations, the the words like, um, you know, love and hate or pain and, you know, happiness and stuff, they're just very abstract. And we hold on to the idea of what they are. And just like what you're saying that you feel that sensation and you realize that they're all just the same thing. They're just, we're holding on to it. And somebody said that this one was bad. So we think that that one's bad. So we have to like shut it out, you know, and you know, I'm, I'm guilty of it when I was younger and, you know, still like, there's still stuff coming out that I'm like <laughs> realizing, you know, and like not having to hold on to. And, uh, we're, we're like so conditioned again, it goes back to that, like to like, snuff out those like the pain and this and that and not realize that they're all just uh sensations that are just as equal as the happiness and you know all that stuff completely yeah and yeah, it's that... cool even your practice of becoming more mindful of it quicker and quicker yeah now i felt this too i'm sure you have from what you just said you're able to feel when you're trying to snuff some sensations mm -hmm. out quicker and quicker instead of yeah. years that go by. Yeah. So you can be like, oh, fuck. Okay, let me like take a look at that. Let me sit with that. Let me feel that. Yeah. And that's how we really begin to like bring more momentum with each practice. Oh, yeah. And we, we become less afraid of like who the fuck we are mm -hmm. inside, man. Yeah. We're yeah. so afraid to feel the shit that we feel. Yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> and, uh, and again, yeah, we're just, we're conditioned that way to like, we think that, uh, a man has to be this way or a woman has to be this way. And, uh, you realize it's all just so arbitrary and it's all an illusion. And, uh, so then you have to kind of struggle with that and still live in like this Western world. And that, that's why, again, when it goes back to like, you know, the difference between meditation or like, the practices here and in like Eastern religion and trying to like, I don't know, mesh it in. It's going to be really hard for people over here because, or at least in Western culture, you know, cause, uh, we're so conditioned to be that way. And, uh, mm. it's going to take a long time, but I think like science is really good with that because we are very like, we need like si science. We need to like, have proof that this actually works, you know? And so you have those, like you said, like um, just concentrating on your breathing and how much that really brings you into harmony with your mind and your body. It's all kind of one unit, a tool or whatever you want to, whatever, you know, and uh, having that harmony and bring, being able to bring back to that awareness is like 
really key. And I think of um, it being like uh, having some sort of science situation will help people in the Western sense, you know, um, be more aware of it. I could see in a good number of years, especially with like decriminalization now going on for mushrooms in like, um, is it Denver or is it all of Colorado Denver. or is it just like, I think it's just Denver. I think it is too. It's yeah. Cause they're weird. very specific by just saying <laughs> Denver, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is odd, but, but the, Hey, that's great. And that's a huge um, leap, huge leap. And I think like it'll wash away after a good number of years, like the weird, um, uh, hold that it had on from like the sixties of being like, Oh, well these like hippie crazy people are the only ones taking it. And I think like, um, once like that generation starts to like kind of phase out and realize like the, um, how much of a tool it really can be, um, it'll get more credibility. And I think like years later, I think we're going to see a new age coming in, you know? Yeah. And I think like, it's, it's just coming out so much, and I, and I can only attest to this from me, like, um, for so many years of not on any drugs or alcohol or anything and, uh, and then opening up myself more, you know, and being in control, you know, and having the whole time, it was more of like a, a fear base situation and a fear base of who I was and, or who I thought I was and, you know, and then opening up to that. I mean, that was like a, a big fast track for it you know, taking psychedelics and then having the same experiences loosely, you know, on through just meditation, um, was another like moment of a realization of being like, Oh wow. Okay. So, you know, I had someone ask me once when I was like explaining a vision or something that I had when I was took like a large dose of mushrooms once and, and they were like, well, how do you know if it was real what you experienced or was it just because of the mushroom thing? And I was like, well, it's real because either way I experienced it, regardless if it was the, the, you know, the medicine or not, I, it was still there and I experienced it just like a dream. Like a dream is still real because you experience it. It's just not the whole reality. It's just, what's that? Well, your body doesn't know otherwise. It, it sweats, doesn't It fucking feels, yeah. it feels that different dimension. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, these experiences are there and you can still, um, have them through practice of meditation. If you really are like, at it or at a ceremony or something, you know, your body is like that conduit, I think, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, yeah, I look forward to experiencing it more, <laughs> uh, you know, until like, it's just not required anymore, you know? So, <laughs> and, uh, it's fun. It's a whole new, new approach to life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, whatnot. So, so common for someone's questioning to be how do you know it, it was real under those circumstances mm -hmm. but what makes real real fuck. you know reality what is what is your idea of reality <laughs> i mean precisely right and it's yeah. it's so wild because it boils down to the same exact concept that we discussed eight minutes ago yeah why the fuck does it matter yeah exactly What's happening mm -hmm. what are you learning yeah what are you going to take from it mm -hmm. what are you going to take from it what can you integrate What's being mm -hmm. embedded? What's being reconfigured? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like a different person now? Yeah. How the fuck does that person feel? Yeah. How will that person behave? Mm -hmm. Have the have the things shedded from you that you don't want anymore? Yeah. Probably to some degree. Yeah. Embody that present person. Mm -hmm. Our mind can fucking pull us back into oh, yeah. these old categories of behaviors and responses. And if we so latch cool. onto that shit, dude, we're back in the same position. Mm -hmm. So that's you just caught right back dude, up you're in caught it. Caught right back yeah. in. And that's like the 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 idea of like samsara, you know, caught in the <laughs> caught in the wheel. I keep hitting this microphone, I'm talking too much with my hands. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, you caught up in the in the wheel there, like of uh, you know, the cycle, and uh, you just get caught up. And I think a lot of that, um, um. This is a, totally just maybe my my opinion on this. I mean, it could be a, a it's obviously a, a physical thing, but it's so much of a, of a mental thing too, and being stuck in the wheel of birth and death and your your thoughts, transient thoughts coming in and out and and uh, um, yeah, dealing with all of that is pretty hard too. Sorry. It's very interesting 
you brought up a point a, a while ago that like planted a beautiful seed mm. and it was the aspect of like of our parents and the information that we grow up in and what finger can we point to find out the, the cause and the effect and the resource and everything. Yeah. Maybe that is why it's so important to travel, to undergo proper plant medicine ceremonies. Yeah. Maybe that's why it's so important to expand your communities and your environments and mm -hmm. like really obtain brand new input. Yeah. From different cultures, from different ways of like flooding your perspective with brand new options more yeah. options and then maybe that's when we get more of what choice should be yeah if we only have like two options what are we really choosing yeah exactly yeah. and how should we choose how to behave like yeah we get caught up in these weird like binary aspects of mm -hmm. patterns yeah up subconscious and conscious yeah so yeah, it's very fascinating when we get into like discussions like this, man, like your world, yeah. it's like showing itself to me oh, good. and to our audience. And like, yeah. that's how we build perspective, dude. Yeah. That's how I grow every single discussion I undergo. Mm -hmm. Like it's impossible not to, as you can <laughs> both sure. tell right now. Yeah. Like it's so profound. Yeah. It's so healthy. Yeah, it is. It's good to talk, talk about stuff like this too. Um, Yeah. <laughs> resources input mm -hmm. information yeah it needs to all be out there mm -hmm. consumption of like nutrients yeah like nutrient dense nutrients mm -hmm. mm. Mm. <laughs> eat it all up <laughs> it's a, it's a yeah if you have like only a few options sometimes people just choose not to you know <laughs> also or there's so many options you know and i'm just like well and I'll just sit That's here because I don't even know what to. Yeah. So bombarded with a lot of it. Just just pick one. <laughs> yeah, that's where. Mm, let's dig into that a little bit, because mm. I really feel that often in life being very overwhelmed. Yeah. And I really felt that a few years ago with like the beginning stages to a business. Mm -hmm. Like I was the only person doing it. It's like, holy shit, like we have to do this. We have to do this. It's like. It put me in a place at one point where it's like, I don't know where to go. I don't know what, I don't know what move to make at all. Mm. Like, where do we, where yeah. do we go with that kind of position? Yeah. I've, I've, I've had, I have that recently with, uh, figuring out where I wanted to move to. And I just thought, well, I'll just keep, keep doing what I'm doing until the time comes where I'm like, okay, here, here it is. This is where I'm at now, you know? And Sometimes it's a little harder, you know, because I also like grapple with was I like just, um, you know, like hiding from something like should I do like just, you know, I'm like trying to figure out where to move to. So I'm like uh, putting it off, you know, kind of situation. So I was like grappling with that for a while. Like, well, I need to because society is telling me I need to mm -hmm. like be here. I need to work full time. I need to do this. I need to like you know, bend over backwards for all of this like stuff where really I knew it, it didn't really matter what I chose because the absurdity of choosing literally is just, it's crazy. You know, I, it, it just kind of, it, it, you know, I'm in a weird headspace with a lot of all of, all of that too, you know, trying to pick and choose like what's better or worse. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out how to look at it in a different aspect because it's not really about what's better or worse because there's because you can't have one without the other regardless of where you are. So the absurdity of like choosing either or, you know, like the was it like the fleas on a hot griddle, you know, you got to jump or they fall. It's like it's the same thing. They're just <laughs> different words, you know, either way you got to, you know, you just, yeah. So I'm just trying to be like organically in the moment and, you know, with that stuff. Beautifully well put. Cool. Where does, <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Where does um, labeling something as good or r right or wrong, good or bad, become into just judgment? You're just judging That's exactly whatever. all it is. We, we, the moment we acknowledge something that's disgusting, beautiful is right behind it or the, the vice versa. You know, so you can't have one without the other, but you, we create the boundaries to like stop us from experiencing the full, hmm. 
moment. Mm, meditation, so, dude. Yeah, that's completely. What, that's what it's helped me with. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like uh, the moment we assume something is bad, we try to like hide from it and go for the good. But you can't only have good. It just doesn't work. It's just such common sense. I mean, <laughs> the perfect yin yang. It's like the, you know, <laughs> and in and in every good and bad, there's there's the other too, uh-huh. and you know. Hmm. or uh or like uh you know two sides of the coin but it's the same coin so they are in relation to one in relation yeah you know so you have to accept both you can't you just can't have one so um that's what it's really hard for people to have is to accept that that's really what it comes down to i think you know for me i do my absolute best with my current level of knowledge to choose the proper words that align best or suit the best feeling or sensation with what I'm trying to express. Mm -hmm. So I really align with proper over improper Mm. rather than right or wrong. Yeah. Because there's something that just feels like a little, it's proper, it's more proper. Yeah. And right is like, it's too fucking distinct. Yeah. It's too like, there's no other way. Yeah. But proper is like, I may be wrong, but I'm going to flow with this. I'm going to yeah, trust yeah. this and I'm going to do what the fuck feels good. What, yeah, exactly. Or what feels best. Yeah. Yeah. And then what makes it wrong or right regardless in the end? Yeah. It's just up to you. It's 100%. your, it's your, um, it's your world <laughs> for like the lack of, <laughs> you know, better phrasing, but like you, you create your own, I mean, we create society as us. So as soon as we see our, you know, our, our, uh, you know, like my frequency has changed, I viewed the world as such, you know? And so, Hmm. um, social responsibility has changed and, you know, all, all of this, uh, yeah, all of this discussion kind of helps put it put it down because i don't i don't speak enough out about stuff like this so it's interesting you know well would that just be namaste in a different aspect like how we view society is like how we view ourselves yeah totally so if you think about like in eastern philosophical ways of perspective anything is something or somebody yeah there's it's a weird aspect where like this cup is mutual to who we are Mm -hmm. so namaste if i can view this as precisely what it is without judgment that is like this inner connected flow of how we perceive anything oh totally i haven't thought about that in terms of like society yeah or trump or yeah yeah ever exactly there's always somebody that was before somebody and it's it's a never-ending cycle and you think that like man you gotta learn that these thoughts aren't, you, you, we need a radical, new radical way of thinking because it's, it's not working, <laughs> you know, but society is like that cup. It's, it might not just be a cup. It can be anything you want. You know, you flip it over and you can put something on it and it's a table, you know, you can smash it. It's just the form that we created to say it's a cup or it's just a society. It's nothing. It's just the, <laughs> dude. you know, uh, so that's one of the best ways well, <laughs> I've ever heard that expressed. It's true. I, it's, it's such an abstract thing, you know, it's just, it's just like you can view the rest of the world that way too, you know, <laughs> that kind of mentality and mindset and perspective reroutes planet earth Mm -hmm. that aspect of we just all we really have to do is morph something a little bit differently and it will be different therefore Mm -hmm. different results and responses will come from it yeah what we get caught up in is people and maybe this is right or wrong i don't fucking know but how do you morph it how do you remorph yeah but all this money is going here there's all these weird things and like oh yeah very intricate when you Mm -hmm. get down to it but that's where it's like, oh, but the concept of the remorphing, that's yeah, very intriguing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, re, re like directing your, I mean, it's still a cup. Don't get me wrong. It's just not only a cup. <laughs> it can be anything. So you're remorphing it like, you know, the the form can still be there. It's not like you're like 
on a you know drug and all of a sudden you're mentally it's like a turns into a squiggly do thing you know <laughs> it's just like you know philosophically speaking it can be anything you want it to be and that can change the rest of society too but it's like i don't know you know i, I don't have the answers to help uh the rest of the world you know they just have to figure it out themselves and maybe this 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 lifetime they will if not maybe they'll have another chance if they're into reincarnation or not who, who knows you know uh hmm. it's going to be hard and, and i think also like um you know once we start trying to organize all this like organizing truth and you can't you can't organize anything of that nature because truth is so universal that everybody can uh, enjoy it and understand it. But we create our like divisions, you know, we have people fighting people for like an idea or a thought. And then we have another person doing the same thing because their idea is better. So they're just, it's like fighting fire with fire all the time for all of humanity. It's always that way. And you just think at some point, somebody's gonna be like, this has got to be enough. Let's start over here. Let's <laughs> figure it out. I don't know how it would happen. But uh, it, it starts with just that one person, though. You know what I mean? You know, like, uh, especially with Gandhi, you know, and uh, when they were trying to figure out how to get the British out in, in India. And, you know, he sat there and it's just like, well, and they're like, come like, w w tell us what to do. Tell us what to do. And he had no idea. And it just one day got up and walked to the, you know, um, to the to the ocean like and all these people followed him and it was i think it was something to do with salt like the the british like they they had like an embargo or or something like they had to only buy like um a certain spice and i think it was salt though from uh, the british so he went out and you can just pick it up anywhere out there up on like uh the beaches and stuff and get salt for free but it was like illegal to do that so he walked all the way down there with all these people and he just took salt and just walked away and that's all he did and it started this huge revolution you know what i mean and it, you know look at martin luther king jr you know like all of these people it just takes like a, you know a good mind and a good heart to like produce this you know so i have a real question for you yeah i mean a real question and like being powerfully felt for the both of us to discuss. How do we build new thoughts? <laughs> How do we legitimately build new patterns of thought? Hmm. I think um, meditation, you know, and I think um, it's kind of like... Um, It's like uh, the best way to clear your mind is to just sit. You know, you look at like uh, water and how uh, dirty it is, you know, because you keep agitating it. But if you just let it sit, that water is going to clear and you're going to see right through everything, <laughs> you know. So just sit. You can't like, you know, you can't act on every thought, you know, because there's so many going on, you know. So you have to just sit for a second and really like absorb what's going on and um, your mind changes about what those thoughts are and you start to kind of question everything. And I think, I think meditation is the best for that. You know, I think the thoughts will always be the same. It's just like not holding on to them, you know, cause we all have the same insecurities and everything, you know, we just like hold, some people hold on to them longer, you know, attachment yeah yeah and um and i don't think again i wouldn't say it's like a bad thing but like you said it's like not the best thing or like the <laughs> what did you use like proper it's yeah. maybe not the proper thing but you know but it's also totally okay it's like uh well it's in the process of learning what to and not to do yeah exactly and that's where it is all okay yeah it's where it is all necessary mm-hmm whether or not we want to admit it, it's all necessary mm -hmm. to feel the feeling of mistreating people and being mistreated, yeah. to learn how you should morph and adapt to be in the best alignment with your 
internal self as possible. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. that therefore will blend and bleed into the people around you. Yeah. It's just that that energy, you know, and it's like um, it's so simple. I think this is like another thing of like Western culture, too. Like when you start talking about like energy fields and stuff like that, they're like, whoa, dude, like, what are you talking about? It's like, well, it's common sense, because like if if I'm happy, it's just going to rub off. Like people are going to be like, oh, yeah, OK, like. But if you're like all sour and bummed, like people are going to feel that that's that energy, you know what I mean? So it, you can see it, you, you know, it's not a debate, you know, it's not a <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it's right there. So, yeah, <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so then how do you feel Gandhi was able to produce like the proper response to that scenario was that just through meditation i think it's to not act like on your first that's hard because you you want to be natural but it's also okay if you don't know like you know like uh what do they call um who do they call a flip-flopper and the president was a john Kerry or Bill Clinton or something, you know, like could imagine like they you're on such a a level where you have to like th- you have to know if you don't know, like you, there's you're an idiot, you know, or like something's wrong with you. Like you can't just sit and, and think about it for mm-hmm. a moment, you know, and relax because a lot of these people like Gandhi, I think, would just sat and thought about it, you know, instead of like acting like rashly, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, sitting there thinking about the best solution, but here, like you wouldn't be able to do that. You would look incompetent, you know? And, uh, so I think that's like our mindset. So I think like, yeah, you have to like allow like space to just like wait for a second and think, you know, and, and everyone's like, no, no, we need it now. No. <laughs> well, that's what, re- but how do you, that restarts the whole cycle. Mm-hmm, exactly. So and that you was just a, jump right back in. Yeah. And and if you don't have a clear mind, how are you supposed to even make a rash decision if you don't even know what what you're going to do? Because that's like, a, again, like clearing your mind, you know, then just making like random decisions without any. Hmm. Well, and it feels like when you do clear your mind and you choose properly, it holds more gravity because you are because you better know that world. Yeah. So then you can better trust and have faith, or your intuition will show itself, and you'll mm-hmm. resonate deeper with the choice that you have chosen. Yeah, exactly. And that's where it's like, okay, now I can really put more marbles or whatever you want to call it into mm-hmm. this this move, this decision. Yeah. What do you feel like comes first, your thoughts or your feelings? <laughs> yeah, it's hard. I think my feelings are my thoughts. (laughs) So, uh, I don't know. I would say like that feeling definitely comes out and then it becomes aware, like when I can, I can feel it physically, you know, and then like the thoughts start kind of kicking in about it and then Mm -hmm. they're kind of like put into question, you know, but I mean, they're very integrated. They're the, you know, I think the, I think feelings and thoughts are pretty much the same. I would agree. Yeah. And, but I wonder a lot. So I went to like a group meditation thing a few months ago where Mm -hmm. people like to label their thoughts. Oh, this is anger. This is like, that's like a step in the process. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I don't know how much I believe in that from my own personal perspective. Yeah. It feels more like the thoughts should be should label themselves, mm. or no, sorry, the feeling should label themselves. It's like if I feel the feeling more, the proper words going to associate with what that is, because yeah. it's going to better align with the energy that is being presently felt. Yeah. If I just feel anger and I label it anxiety without fucking even looking at it, yeah, what what am I missing here? Yeah, exactly. It's a weird disconnect. Very weird, yeah. So, but in return, maybe that's how we develop the association with thought to feeling. Oh, okay. So I wonder if it is kind of like a a backwards, deeper approach before you can really incorporate the two. But then, yeah, in that moment and in other moments, they are still very deeply integrated. Yeah, 
but what yeah, words are. do we choose? Yeah. That's, that's what's weird. Yeah. Well, cause words are so abstract. And I think that like people would say like the way that we're speaking probably now is very abstract, but in general, I think words are abstract cause they're just ways to like, you know, like for me to tell you what uh, I'm feeling. So we have to have some sort of like description, but it's not the reality of what it actually is, you know? So it's just the, it's just the word that we use to like, you know, like that's what I think. Um, well, I won't get on that just yet. Cause I, <laughs> um, um, man, I'm, I'm trying to think of, um, the best way to describe this. Like, um, I, I think like, uh, too, like you have to look at what makes you feel angry, right? The feeling, like, where does a feeling come from? And it could be like, well, this guy said something I'm like, well, um, why, why do I feel that way after he said that? Like what may, you know, like asking yourself these questions while you're in meditation, you know, or, or something, if they, if they like come to your mind really quick, like just let it go and run with it and it'll go away when it goes away. And, uh, I think that's when you start to figure out a lot of feelings are related to your thoughts and then they're related to your own like insecurities or, Mm -hmm. or the opposite of that or whatever it is, you know, and then they just sort of end because they're almost resolved in a way, but, or, you know, cause you know, like you you hang on to certain things because they're not resolved, you know, or like our feelings and yeah. And then we create that word and to describe what it is, you know, mm-hmm. wow. I think, um, I think that, um, uh, the word God is just a, um, a substitute word for a feeling of like love. You know what I mean? I think that that's what God, this is again from, you know, my, my experience, you know, God is just like a word. It's a, such an, a, an abstract thought process but so so many people are so afraid of the word god to say god and i was too when i was younger until i had my experiences through that and realizing like no it doesn't have to be this western mindset of like um you know a sky man or you know floating or whatever you know or it could be it was just some people like it's a form that's required for some people and sometimes i use it sometimes i don't but i think that I think it is a substitute word, you know, and it's funny because the more I read later on after these experiences, going back into the books and um, reading the Gita and and reading these things. And I was like, this is exactly what I experienced. And these people twenty five hundred years ago already knew they already wrote about it. And these words are just like, again, they're it's just to the best of their capability to help you hear what they what they discovered and like Mm -hmm. this was the here's the you know the prescription here's the instructions and now you take the medicine and and you go through it you know wow yeah so i think um yeah like later on after i read a lot of that and i remembered writing it down in like a crazy in my journal and being like you know (laughs) all on mushrooms in in my like house i had set up real nice and i was like meditating and had like, uh, mantras going. And, and, um, I remember like when I was slowly coming back out of everything and coming more into this plane and I just was like, I write all this stuff. And then, you know, reading, um, you know, about Zen Buddhism and stuff like that, or, or again in the Gita and stuff like that, finding like these connections that I experienced through that. And, um, yeah, realizing a lot of these words are just such abstractions. And it actually confuses me now more than ever. <laughs> so now, now I'm too like, what did you say? Well, and I get a little too like no, for real. up on the other plane too quickly because uh, I just, I, I'm easily forgetting where my role is sometimes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I'm like, no, I'm like still me and I have to still pretend to be me, you know, act as me. But there's like this other level. You know, so it's like, you know, you, you know, what I mean, <laughs> it's like we're in a movie, you know, and I'm an actor playing Craig Chazen and I can't forget that I'm that because like if then I'll lose my job and I won't be able to like support <laughs> myself, but I know it's not fully me, you know, I can take the suit off when I want, you know, mm-hmm. 
And then once you know that, then you can be whatever you want to be. And it's so fun. The world is insane. You know, it's beautiful and disgusting all at the same time. <laughs> That's what's profound about moments like this. Yeah. Is we are able to better reveal who we are. Yeah. With who we are. Yeah, totally. You know, and like the internal health and healing that's happened in this room through discussion mm -hmm. with myself and the people being discussed with and how they've reached out afterwards just like whoa i've never really expressed or articulated no, those powerful. parts of myself yeah man yeah. like what that's doing to our psyche it's profound mm -hmm. profound yeah yeah, it's it's insane. And I love that like this stuff is coming out and you know, and it's I mean obviously it's been out years and <laughs> lifetime before me, but it, it's it's incredible to be able to like learn so much through it. Um and um hearing like, you know, with, with you and, and just speaking, it's like a yeah, feels some good love and energy yeah, from that, you know. Felt, yeah, man. it's cool. It's grounding. <laughs> yeah, like definitely really grounding. Yeah, and just just the potential that it could open up someone else's perspective on on their reality. I think um, that just makes me like way more stoked and mm -hmm. and excited because I think like toward the you know when I first started tattooing, I was like, I got to be a tattooer. I got to be cool. I got to do this. I got to be this way. And, um, now like my thought process is just, I just want to people to be stoked and happy and what, what I can do my best to relieve that suffering. If there's, if, if any, or, you know, or even if that's possible, you know, I, I wouldn't even know if that's like something that uh, you can even do. Mm -hmm. uh, it, just it's like provide the opportunity for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's to pretty just much be all there. We can do. Yeah. Yeah. Because who knows, I mean, how much are we able to influence other people pretty deeply? Yeah. But still, to what degree? Yeah. You know, and just providing, like, a platform for healing to happen if it's supposed to happen. Yeah. Like, that's such a, like, a, I mean, from what I feel like, a, like, humbly balanced within harmony with planet and universe mm -hmm. and energy and, and mission and, like, the respect for the unknown, but like yeah. the appreciation for what we're able to input and help with. Like there's a very fucking powerful position that we're able to like be in if we yeah. allow ourselves to find the groove. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Dude, Craig, I talk with you for four <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah, I can tell, yeah. <laughs> but my man, thank you so much. Thank for being you. Here. Yeah. I really appreciate having me. On yeah. Here. That was wonderful. Yeah. It means a lot. I love it. Do you, Thank you. Um, yeah. Do you have any remaining thoughts or anything that you feel left in the tank? No, I mean, other than just to, you know, be kind to everybody and, and just, just listen. I think listening is the best because <laughs> I've done a lot of not listening through my years and now I'm trying to listen a lot more <laughs> and, um, without any judgments, you know, and just, just absorbing it, keeping those, you know, the, the duality of thought out and just being, being open and present is like the key. And I, and I hope that, uh, other people can understand that through the years, you know, and it's not something that just happens overnight, but, uh, or maybe it does, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so for such some, an honest right? response right yeah. there. <laughs> How can people find you? Um, they can find me, um, probably easiest online at this point. Um, I also have a website, it's just craigchazen.com. That has some art stuff and photography on there. And I have my um, Instagram, which is uh, Boxcar Tattooer. Um, and uh, that has more information on there usually. So cool. there'll be more like through this year, like a little more solid information and just kind of the transition period of where I'm living. So I wish you nothing but the absolute yeah. best, man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you.